Hello everyone, my name is Roder and you're watching the Minecraft Guide for Beginners, the tutorial series on YouTube for new and returning players to Minecraft 1.16 and beyond. In this episode, we're going to get stuck into the nether and we're going to go looking for a nether fortress because we need some blaze rods in order to progress on in our end dragon preparations. I really would like to have potions of slow fall and maybe some uh, other potions on hand just to uh, make sure that we are fully equipped for the dragon. In order to brew, we need blaze rods. And the only place that you can get blaze rods from is the nether, in the nether fortress where blazes spawn. And these places can be quite dangerous. So let's make sure we have proper preparations here. My inventory is a mess right now. So I'm just gonna drop all of this. I'm gonna keep a couple arrows for my bow. Some torches, we're gonna need more torches than that. And of course, my storage is horribly disorganized. I think we're just gonna grab 24 coal. Let's see, do we have sticks anywhere? I, I think we we're finally running out of sticks. Yeah, we have finally run out. We're gonna have to make some more sticks, wow. All right, let's go here, let's grab that. And let's do this real quick and make ourselves some sticks and then make ourselves a bunch of torches. Now the reason why we need torches is that we're going to be using a navigational tool called a scumpus. Uh, first popularized by Skizzleman, I believe, which is two cobblestones stacked on top of each other and a torch pointing back to the direction you came from. So if you need to get back to where you started, you just follow where the torches point you. So it's a very nifty little navigational aid, especially in the nether. Oh, look at that. <laughs> we found the torches after we made a bunch more. Isn't that how it usually goes with disorganized storage? You look for something, you can't find it, and then you make it, and then you find it right away. So, in our preparations, we're going to need, we got a bow, and we have all of our tools. I don't think we're going to need, yeah, we, mm, yeah, yeah, we'll take it all. We'll just be very, very careful not to fall into lava, because if you die in the lava, all your items will burn up in the lava, and you lose everything. There's no recovering that. You have to make all new items. So I'm just looking for some gold right now because we're going to need to make a piece of gold armor. Because if we're not wearing gold, the piglins will attack us. And the nether is already dangerous enough. We don't need additional mobs attacking us if we can help it. So the gold will help pacify the piglins. We still have to be very cautious of all the other nether mobs. Now, if you have no idea what piglins are because you're just coming back to the game, they are a new mob added in 1.16 and they will trade gold for items. So you give them gold and they'll give you back an item. But they will attack you and be hostile towards you if you're not wearing gold yourself. So apparently, it's like gold members uh, crew. You know, you've got to be down with the gold to get in with them. And uh, there's also some other new nether mobs. There's a uh, Hoglins, which are giant boar-like creatures that hit hard. It's almost like a Ravager, in a way. Now, if you don't know what a Ravager is, that came in the Village and Pillage update 1.14, I believe. All right, looking around here, we just came through the portal into the nether. It looks pretty good, pretty safe. And Ravagers are basically big beast things that hit that headbutt you and do a lot of damage, a little bit of a knockback, similar to a Hoglin. So. As you can see, I've set up some compasses. I've done some off-camera exploration. That's how I know we're going to find another fortress this episode. So I believe it's this way. And let's go to the nether fortress first and then see if we can get our blaze rods. And then once we get our blaze rods, we'll kind of explore off in other directions. And I'm going to show you guys the di as many different biomes as I can. Now, this structure right here is a bastion. This was also added in the 1.16 update and contains a bunch of uh, treasure loot chests. A lot of piglins, which the piglins will attack you if you open the chest, so you gotta have caution there. Now if you use like a hopper to drain the chest into a non-chest inventory, like, the, like just, you know, taking stuff out of the hopper itself, they're fine. But if you don't, they will, they'll attack you. Or if you can wall yourself off, open the chest, they'll still attack you, but they won't be able to get to you, and eventually they'll de uh, the egg rolls, they'll de aggro you. All right, so now I'm just kind of backtracking my way through a path I explored earlier. Now, the last time I was at this particular nether fortress, I ended up you know, dying in lava. Hence the uh, the explanation and the caution about dying in lava this time around. 
I tried to leap off the fortress to uh, a chunk of land a few blocks away to get away from the mobs that were attacking me because I was about to die. And I misjudged the distance and I ended up falling into a lava lake. So rip all my gear from that. So this time I'm hoping I don't accidentally hit a zombified pinklet, which is formerly the pigmen of the nether. Because if you attack one, all of them in the area will aggro you and they'll swarm you until you're dead. So I was being chased by two blazes and I believe um, two wither skeletons. Jump over there and there's the next scump is here. You can see how these scumps are kind of forming a little bit of a trail for me to follow. That's why I like using them so much. Makes it very easy to get your way back. So now, yep, there's the next compass. So right now we're in a Basalta Delta biome. In this biome, most mob spawns are gonna be magma cubes. And this is where you can farm a lot of basalt and some blackstone. Speaking of magma cubes, I just heard one. But I can't get a visual on him. Oh, there he is. He should be far enough away. There we are. Jump over to magma. And there's also this ash falling. It's like very, feels very much like Silent Hill in this biome. For those who have played the Silent Hill games. With the constant rain of ash coming down. And the quietness. Alright, let's head down. Yep, there's our bridge. And once we get to set up our nether hub, which I'm pretty sure I'm going to do on the nether roof. We'll set up a portal for the, this fortress so we don't spend so much time walking to it over land. Now there's a lot of magma cubes here and they can jump quite high so I'm uh... Um... Did I make a wrong turn here? <laughs> My bridge just abruptly ended. I must have missed a turn somewhere. And now these little creatures out here in the lava lake, they're called striders and you can ride them you have a saddle and a uh, warp fungus on a stick. You can ride them very similar to pigs and get across uh, lava lakes and lava oceans that way. Unfortunately, I don't have either a saddle or warp fungus on a stick, so we're gonna have to stick to the old fashioned bridging method. And, oh, there's the tunnel I should have taken to begin with. Ugh. I hate ghasts so much. Now, in this crimson biome, crimson fungus, or no, this warp fungus biome, crimson is red, not blue. We're going to see a lot of endermen spawning. So this could be a place where we come to farm ender pearls to make the eyes of ender so that we can go ahead and find a stronghold. And the reason for finding a stronghold is because, well, we need to uh, get the end portal, power it up so we can get to the end dimension, kill the dragon, and get our elytra. There we go, this way. Elytra and shulker boxes, and then we enter the end game stage where the real fun begins. Like, up until you kill the ender dragon, I consider that like the tutorial stage where you're kind of learning the game, learning the mechanics, etc., etc. Oops, scup is this way. But once you get the elytra and shulkers, you're pretty much set up with pretty much anything you want. Maybe netherite gear needs to come after that. But, uh,. Let's see, let's look around for the next scumpus. Don't look at the Enderman. If you look them in the eye, they will aggro you. And like I said, you know, we don't need additional mobs aggroing us if we don't need, have to. Looking around. There's, there's the next scumpus. I think that's, yeah. Whoa! Ooh. Oh boy. Ooh, okay. We're okay. We're just gonna pillar back up real here. I thought for sure I was going into a, a lava lake with that fall. I, I guess I need to look before I leap. <laughs> oh, I always do that. I just jump and then, and then I don't have enough momentum to cover the gap and bloop, lava lake time. Now we're getting close to the nether fortress here because the nether fortress reaches into this biome, I believe, into the warped fun, uh, yeah, the warped. Fungus. Yeah, I looked at time too, and I still came up short. There we go. We'll cross this bridge rather than jumping the ravine. Oh, there's a blaze right there. Okay. 
Let's configure for re for range attack mode. Bows at the ready. Oh. Okay, I'm getting crossfire here. Trying to use terrain to my advantage here. Uh, there's so many zombie piglins over there. Now, there's a lot of wither skeletons. I mean, this is going to be a... a sp we could really make a nice wither skelly farm over here. Oh, hello! Yay, 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 yay! Back, you foul beasts! And we have blazes already swarming. Zombie piglins everywhere. Eat. Duck behind this tree. I mean, this situation, this is probably more intense than any other nether fortress I've been in in my Minecraft days. There's zombified piglins everywhere. Which makes it really difficult to use the bow reliably. Because if I hit one of them, it's game over. There's so many of them. And wither skeletons coming out of anywhere. Alright, let's move down. Look at all those blazes over there. Wow. There must be a spawner up there or something. So this is definitely a good fortress. Ah! Stop that! Alright, we got. Ah, uh, there's, there's a swither that way. I'm just being... See, it, it, it gets very hairy in here. Even with protection gear on. I've been getting hit by projectiles I don't even see coming at me. You know, I would say server lake is to blame here, but I'm not playing on a server. Alright, we need to get into some cover somewhere. Of course, there's a wither. Alright. Pop in the cover here. Okay. I think I can take a breather here. Regenerate some health. They're blaze breathing. Let's get some more health. Okay. Let's poke our head around. Blaze rod laying there. I think we can make a break for it. Snake this up. Ah! Alright. Let's just, uh... Alright, a little temporary cover wall here. So we got two blaze rods. I would like to get... Five or ten of them, if that's possible. I mean, we appear to be surrounded. I didn't even see the projectile coming at me. Jeez, Louise. Just go ahead. Placing blocks under pressure is obviously not my strong point. All right, so we kind of got this. Now let's get way up high. Break this open. And let's go ahead and let's proceed through here. Break these open so I can just kind of duck in behind here as I go. Ow! Where did you shoot me through? There, knock you. Alrighty. It's terrifying. Alright, there's Blaze there. Alright, he's lowering. I think this is the most danger I've ever found. I found my- Hey, don't be trying to push me off the ledge. 
Let's get away from that because before another wild random projectile hits me and knocks me off the ledge into the lava lake. So we're up to three blaze rods. We can make a little bit of blaze powder with that. We're going to need quite a bit of it to make eyes of ender for ender chests and the eyes themselves as well as uh, brewing potions. So I, I think we need to, I think almost, we almost need like a blaze farm. But I think manually hunting them for now is going to be good enough if we can, you know, stay alive. <laughs> that is definitely the challenge here. There, sniped that one off behind the zombie pigman. That was a bold move. But it definitely worked out for us. Alright, we're up to five. That was my original goal. But I think we need to push a little harder. And try and get to 10. Ooh, looks like we have a blaze spawner there. Oh, this is... This is bad. Oh! Okay, and... Get a block there. Get up onto this block. Alright, eat, 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 eat. We did it. We have survived plummeting into a lava lake. We have all of our stuff we came with. We have all of our gear. This all would have burnt to nothing if we hadn't escaped the lava. Wow, this is why fire potion resi fire resistance potions are so very important in the nether. I was up fighting a blaze, I got knocked back, fell all the way through the fortress into a lava lake. But I had fire resistance potion for 8 minutes, I went and taken 0 damage for 8 minutes, so easy to escape a lava lake that way. But, since we're trying to set up a brewing stand, and we need blaze powder to do that, we don't have any fire resistance potions, so now we're gonna kinda just build a staircase back up to the fortress and... We're gonna get out of here. <laughs> We're not gonna push any harder here. This has been... We have eight blaze rods. We don't really want to lose those blaze rods because... I don't want to go through and get a third set of gear enchanted. So, let's go ahead and let's just pillar up here. So... Let's, let's sort of recap here. We've uh, went to the nether. We found the nether fortress. We've got some blaze rods. We fell into a lava lake. We got out of the lava lake and survived. We uh, got back with our 10 blaze rods. So next episode, we can set up our brewing stand and do some potion brewing. Actually, we can't. I didn't get any nether wart. That means we have to go back to the nether and get some wart. I'll do that off camera just because that's a long walk. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want to do that in the episode and have to edit all that out. So let's go ahead, let's get up into the into the storage area here and, and start sorting through and putting the stuff away. So that is basically it for this episode. That's all I got time for right now. I hope you enjoyed the episode. I found it entertaining, educational, and informative. If you did enjoy this episode, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Let me know I did a good job. If you're new to the channel, I would love for you to subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes in the guide series as well as the upcoming second season of Adult Craft. We'll be starting that next month in September. I hope you are as excited as I am for that. We're gonna be playing some big things in that series. Some big builds, big farms, everything's going massive in that series. If uh, you didn't know, I do stream live on Twitch from both the Adult Craft server and from the Guide World. If you wanna come and hang out while I'm doing the grindy behind the scenes kind of stuff, you can follow me over at Twitch, the link will be in the description down below, or it's twitch.tv slash Rotterin. Follow me on Twitter for stream and video updates as they occur, and I will see you all in the next episode. Goodbye.